what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel let's solve this math question that says find the values of x for which x minus 2 or raised to the 6 is equal to 6 to the 6. well our first step will be for us to move 6 to the 6 to the left hand side so that we have x minus 2 or raised to the 6 and our 6 to the 6 crosses to the left, it becomes minus 6 to the 6. And this is equal to 0. And now, this expression can be simplified as x minus 2 or raised to the 3. And this is raised to the 2. Minus, this can be simplified as 6 to the 3 or raised to the 2. Well, from indices, powers multiply which means this power and this power multiplies 3 times 2 to give back 6 and the same thing happens here this is equal to 0 now we have an expression in difference of two squares an expression in difference of two squares let's say for example when I have p squared minus q squared this can be written as p minus q times p plus q and by way of comparison our p is equal to the base that is carrying the square which is x minus 2 or raised to the 3 and then our q is equal to the base that is carrying the square which is 6 cubed now we're going to be writing this expression in this form so we have p minus q so this is our p which is x minus 2 or raised to the 3 so this is our p minus q q is 6 to the 3 now we're going to be using this to multiply p plus q p is x minus 2 or raised to the 3 plus q q is 6 to the 3 and this is equal to 0. So we have two cases here. We have x minus 2 or raised to the 3 minus 6 to the 3 equal to 0. Or we have x minus 2 or raised to the 3 plus 6 to the 3 to be equal to 0. Now we're going to be solving these cases one after the other. We'll call this case uh, case 1, and we'll call this other case uh, case 2. Now, let's start with case 1. For our case 1, we see that we have an expression in difference of two cubes. An expression in difference of two cubes, for example, when I have p cubed minus q cubed, this can be expressed as p minus q times p squared plus pq plus q squared. That is it. And now by way of comparison, we see that our p is equal to the base that is carrying the cube. The base is x minus 2. And then our q is equal to the base that is carrying the cube which is 6. Now we want to write this in this form. So we have p minus q. This is our p, which is x minus 2. Our p minus q. q is 6. And then times p squared plus pq plus q squared. So p squared is our p, which is x minus 2 p squared plus p times q, p times q means x minus 2 times 6, which is 6 times x minus 2. And then plus q squared, so plus q squared, q is 6 squared. And then close final bracket equal to 0. And now simplifying, we have x, negative 2, negative 2 gives negative 8 times, now let's expand this. This becomes x squared. Now, 2 times x times negative 2 
gives negative 4x and then plus 2 squared which is 4 so I've been able to expand this to give this plus now let's expand this 6 times x is 6x minus 6 times 2 is 12 plus 6 squared that is 36 and this is equal to 0 now let's simplify what we have inside of this bracket so here we have x minus 8 times this is x squared now negative 4x plus 6x is plus 2x and then 4 negative 12 as in 4 minus 12 plus 36 is actually plus 28 close bracket equal to 0 so there are two cases here we have x minus 8 to be equal to 0 or we have x squared plus 2x plus 28 to be equal to 0. Now starting with the first case, we see that we can easily get the value of x to be equal to moving negative 8 to the right, you get negative 8 to become positive. So we've got real value for x here to be equal to 8. Now, to solve this other equation, you notice that this equation cannot be factorized. So we're going to be using the completing the square method to solve this. I'm using the completing the square method because the coefficient of x from here is an even number. So our first step towards using the completing the square method is for us to move 28 to the right hand side so that we have x squared plus 2x remaining on the left to be equal to as 28 crosses to the right, it becomes minus 28. Now I'll take the coefficient of x, which is 2, divided by 2, square the result and add to both sides. This is what I'm saying. This is x squared plus 2x on the left. Now I'll add the coefficient of x, that is 2, divided by 2, and then take the square. So this is what I'm adding to both sides. I've added it to the left, I'll also add it to the right. This is negative 28 plus 2 divided by 2 squared. That is it. Now this becomes x squared plus 2x plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is 1 squared to be equal to, this is negative 28 plus 2 divided by 2 is 1 squared. Very good. Now on the left, the left is now a perfect squared. So this becomes x plus 1 all raised to the 2 equal to, this becomes negative 28 plus 1 squared is 1. So this simplifies into x plus 1 all raised to the 2 to be equal to negative 28 plus 1 is negative 27. Now, to remove this square, we have to take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 1 all raised to the 2. We take the square root of the left to be equal to plus or minus. We take the square root of the right hand side. Now, notice that this square root and this square cancels out, leaving behind x plus 1 to be equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 27 can be simplified into 9 times 3. 9 times 3 is 27, and then times negative 1. And then breaking this down, we have x plus 1 to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 times the square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 9 is actually 3, this, we're going to leave like this because 3 is not a perfect squared. But the square root of negative 1 is iota. Now simplifying further, we have x plus 1 to be equal to plus or minus. 3 times the square root of 3 times i gives 3 root 3i. And then to get the value of x, we just have to move 1 to the right hand side. 
so that we have x to be equal to as one crosses to the right it becomes negative one and then plus or minus three root three i so there are two values of x from here we have one of it to be negative one go with the plus plus three root three i and then the other one is x equal to negative one now this time go with the negative minus three root three i so remember we've got one real solution for x which is x equal to eight so this is the second solution and this is a third solution second and third solutions are actually complex numbers now let's move on to our case two our case two is where we have x minus two all raised to the three plus six to the three equal to zero notice that what we have here is the sum of two cubes sum of two cubes has a property for example when i have p cube plus q cube this can be expressed as p plus q times p squared minus p q and then plus q squared now we're going to be expressing this in this form but first let's compare our p is the base that is carrying the cube which is x minus 2 and our q is the base that is carrying the cube which is 6. now we're writing this in this form it becomes p plus q p is x minus 2 that's p plus q q is 6. so this is p plus q times p squared that is x minus 2 squared is our p squared minus p times q p times q that is 6 times x minus 2 plus q squared that is 6 squared very good and this is equal to 0 and now simplifying further we have x negative 2 plus 6 is actually plus 4 that is it close brackets times now we're going to be expanding this this will be x squared minus 2 times x times 2 that is 4x and then plus 2 squared is 4 now negative 6 times x that is negative 6x negative 6 times negative 2 is plus 12 and then plus 6 squared is 36 this is equal to 0 now let's simplify what we have inside of this bracket so this will be x plus 4 times this is x squared now adding up like terms negative 4x negative 6x is negative 10x and then 4 plus 12 that is 16 plus 36 is actually 52 so plus 52 equal to 0 so there are two cases here we have x plus 4 okay let me remove this x plus 4 to be equal to 0 or we have x squared minus 10x plus 52 to be equal to 0 so we're going to be solving these cases one after the other for the first case we can easily get the value of x by moving plus 4 to the right hand side and when we do that plus 4 becomes negative 4 so this is another real solution for x and this is the fourth solution we've got so far now let's get the remaining two solutions from this quadratic equation this quadratic equation cannot be factorized and so we're going to be applying the completing the square method to solve this why am i choosing the completing the square method it is because of the coefficient of x which is an even number so let's move 52 to the right hand side so that we have x squared minus 10x to be equal to as 52 crosses to the right it becomes negative 52 
Now look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the coefficient of x, which is negative 10. I'll divide it by 2, and I'll square the result. I will add this expression to both sides of the equation. So we have x squared minus 10x plus this expression, which is negative 10 divided by 2. I can just work it out. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5 squared. And this is equal to, on the right, I have negative 52 plus add the result. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5 squared. That is it. And then simplifying further, the left-hand side is now a perfect squared. So I'm going to be writing the terms with the squared. X and then minus 5 all raised to the 2. This is equal to, now the right-hand side, I have negative 52. Now plus, negative 5 squared is 25. So now simplifying, we have x minus 5, all raised to the 2, to be equal to negative 52 plus 25 is negative 27. And now to remove this square, we have to take the square root of both sides. So I have x minus 5, all raised to the 2. Now take the square root of the left. This is equal to plus or minus. Take the square root of the right-hand side. Now notice that this square root and this square cancels out, leaving behind x minus 5 to be equal to plus or minus. Remember, we've solved the square root of negative 27 before. And we've got 3 root 3i. That is it. And now to get the value of x, I just have to move negative 5 to the right hand side. And when I do that, x will be equal to, as negative 5 crosses to the right, it becomes positive 5. Here we have plus or minus 3 root 3i. So there are actually two values of x from here. Let's separate them. x is 5. Go with a plus, plus 3 root 3i. And x is also 5. Now go with the negative, minus 3 root 3i. So in total, we have 6 values of x. Since the degree of x in the given equation is 6. So we have 2 real solutions and 4 complex solutions. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.